because there's sort of things happening behind the scenes all the time. Um, also, these are literally the letters from the beginning, uh, except I talk about fallout and relationship to frame it a little differently. But the assumption here is that optimizing for repair and optimizing for relationship uh, is inherently better. We're going to get a better result uh, long term if that's how we optimize our lives. Uh, follow up, there is no root cause to failure in complex systems and relationships. If you disagree, I don't have time to back it up right now, so we'll fight later. Um, but we have to assume that. There's too many uh, moving parts for there to be a single thing wrong, and it stops us from learning and getting better as a whole if we assume root cause. Uh, what happens is we start building rigid structures. We try to avoid failure by creating ways to get around that. And so that's great for known failure conditions, but when unknown problems come up, like when your systems are constantly changing, uh, it can lead to catastrophic failure. Uh, sometimes it leads to tech debt and kludge to fix around that, uh, but those debts ultimately have to be paid, and if they don't get paid, uh, collections come in the form of uh, your whole system going down. And human relationships work this way too. When we interact with each other, uh, sometimes we both walk away better than we were there. Sometimes it, there's a transaction involved and one or both people walk away feeling a little bit worse than that, and all of those debts eventually come due. Uh, and that's okay, right? Failure in that interaction is understandable. It's acceptable that we miss that as long as we learn from it and try and get better. Uh, once we understand the edge case, where the edge of failure is, we start learning how we can either push that and improve it or when to hold back. So if I know when it's better for us to be a little bit uncomfortable so that we can grow as humans versus when I need to step back and just provide comfort in this situation, we can have a much better relationship going forward. We can actually build that into something stronger and become better people. Um, so to get started, blameless and just culture is table stakes here. If you're not interested in learning, but interested in finding out who was at fault, then the rest of this talk doesn't matter. Um, but if you can at least understand that portion of the culture, the rest of this will be relevant. Uh, so at Elastic, we are inherently distributed. Uh, my team is 14 people in 10 countries and eight time zones. Uh, our conversations happen through Slack, generally. It's text, it's asynchronous, uh, English isn't always the primary language of the speaker. So we have to assume good intent. If something went wrong in this interaction and we're on the wrong page, we need to assume by default the other person doesn't mean me harm in this interaction. We're all working towards the same goal. So we need to figure out what happened there. If that doesn't solve it, we can dig into, we have a slash zoom command in our Slack channels. So we can actually get face to face, remove these asynchronous translations, actually have uh, inflection and facial expressions so we can start to communicate with each other on a human level. Uh, follow up, two way communication is better than shouting into the void. Uh, sorry to kind of crap on Twitter's entire business model, uh, but that's just inherently better. Uh, so trying this on for size, you might say something like, you know, what I'm hearing is that uh, the commands I executed led to the server crashing, but what I'm hearing is that I'm not really good enough for this team, because this was like the third time it happened. You're acknowledging that the other party didn't verbatim say the things that are impacting you, but also getting the opportunity to explain that even though they didn't say it, you still feel it. Um, conflict still happens. So I kind of think of conflict as an incident, and we can troubleshoot it properly with uh, the tooling of nonviolent communication. It's a really handy tooling process to break down conflicts into component parts. Uh, the first of that is observations. What actually occurred? These aren't evaluations of what we think happened. They are things we can actually see or hear. They're not judgments on that. They want to talk about feelings. What were the impacts of those things? And not what do we think about it, but how did it actually impact us on an emotional level? Because unfortunately, we're very squishy and still deal with emotions. Um, and then further than that, what were the needs? Why do these emotions come up? What human needs do we have? It might just be, you know, I'm feeling really like micromanaged in this and I just need some autonomy to have some control on my own or I just need some recreational time. And requests are exactly that. What do you, what's your request for meeting that need? And it's not a demand because that shifts power balances in other weird ways. They have to be able to say no. Uh, so here are a lot of resources. I will post this on Twitter. Um, and we can have a conversation about it within open spaces, but there's far too much here to talk about in five minutes, so hopefully we'll talk to me after. Thanks.